how to build an exit ready business, future proof or fail. Welcome to the club. You're in it. You on board with that? You got your pen out. You writing these things down. This is gold. I'm changing your life and I'm changing your business. That really is going to separate you from the competition in your business. The only time something fails is when you quit. You have to execute. And the best time to start doing that was yesterday. Hey, everybody. I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of the Brick of the Week. My name is Adam House. I'm CEO of the House of Bricks business advisory services, and also the host of the House of Bricks podcast. So if you haven't listened to any of our episodes, please check it out. And I'm excited to spend some time with you today about how to build an exit-ready business. And so the name of today's episode is Future Proof or Fail. And you may be saying to yourself, well, Adam, I just started my business. I'm not even thinking about an exit. I'm struggling every day. I can't even pay the bills on Friday, let alone worry about someone buying my business. But being exit ready is not just about being ready to sell your business. It's about a mental discipline filled with accountability, testing, failing, learning, and repeating that is going to help you build tremendous value in your business. And the best time to start doing that was yesterday. And the second best time is today. So get out your pen, get out your paper. I'm going to give you some quick hits here on just things to think about as you approach your day. And again, I've been an entrepreneur for longer than I've not. I think 25 years, I'm 46, do the math, going to be 46 in March. I just added a year to my age for no reason, still enjoying being 45 years old. And so let's get in today talking about building an exit ready business. And what I'm going to share with you are really my battle-tested blueprints. This isn't something I read in a book or copied from someone else. A lot of the ideas, you know, there's not much new under the sun, but it's how you package them and execute on them that really is going to separate you from the competition in your business. First thing we're going to do is talk about your mindset. So literally the one thing in the world you can control is your mind. You can't control your health. I mean, you can make the right decisions, but you can make all the right decisions and still get sick. You could, you can't control your circumstances around you. You can't control the stock market. So the one thing you can control is your mind. And I want to talk to you about a lot of people say, oh, manifest your future. Well, I had a guest on our show about a month ago, and she talked about the difference between creating and manifesting. And the difference is creating actually requires you to do something. So I'm sure you can tell by looking at me in my history, I'm not one to sit around under a tree and hope things manifest. Okay. I got to get out and create my future. I've got to win. I'm competing in a market. I'm trying to take customers. I'm trying to innovate. So you have to have the right mindset. So when you wake up in the morning, Sure, visualize, get your gratitude journal out. I still don't understand those. I live my life being thankful. I don't need to sit around and uh, write down three things I'm thankful for. So that's a, a topic for another day. But think about how am I going to create the business and the life that I want and how am I going to get there? Well, I can tell you the fastest way to get there is to find someone that is where you want to go. They obviously have done something that worked and find a lot of people, find advice. Wisdom is found in the counsel of many. So create that vision of your future self, your future business, and then start taking action towards those goals. And when I say take action, it does not mean that every action has to be correct. Okay. You're going to, especially early on, you have no clue what you're doing. Just admit it. So, so take action, get results, and then continue to make progress. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get that creation mindset. The second thing you need to do is become obsessed with your customers. So I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. They want to sit in the closet and come up with the perfect product. Well, I can tell you the best feedback that you will ever get in your business is from your customers. So get to market, get feedback, and then make improvements to your product and get the customers buy-in. How can we make this product better for you? 
What problems can we solve that we're not solving today? That information is gold. And that's what you need to do is have the right mindset, get your product to market. And then the third thing, once you have that feedback, is ruthless innovation. The world is changing so fast right now. Social media, anyone can hop on and all of a sudden they're a prop in a, a, a video of them in a jet and now everyone believes what they're saying. Like You have to continually innovate and prove to the market who you are, why your product's better, and more importantly, what is your roadmap to continue to solve problems for your clients every day, becoming obsessed with that. The company of, I'm sure we all think about is Amazon, right? So Jeff Bezos, that's all he talks about is customer obsession. And they created the Amazon flywheel. If you're not familiar with it, go look it up. I don't have time to get into it today. But they just created a money-making machine solving problems for their customers, improving the experience, improving price, improving selection, became obsessed with them. They're still obsessed with it to this day. I mean, think about when Amazon started, what were they doing? They were selling books. How different could it be? But you know what he did? He started the business. He made decisions. Then he took the feedback and built uh, an empire, right? That's uh, solving major problems. And people told him he couldn't do it, told him it was a bad idea. He just kept on, kept innovating, and got obsessed with the customer and made an incredible experience. I, I don't know about you guys, but the Amazon UPS guy comes to my house you know, five days a week. It's like I live in Santa's workshop. There's just boxes and boxes showing up. So that's a, another story for another day is how to control your wife's Amazon spending. They have made it so easy. So just you know, click, subscribe, and then your, your front yard is full of boxes. So, so you got the innovation piece. And yes, I do have some notes. It's okay to have notes. I'm not just rattling all this off. So I'm looking down on my notes now. And so the fourth thing that I want to talk to you about is unwavering execution. You have to execute in your business in order to be successful. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Execution is not just making the right decision. It's making decisions. I'm going to say it probably on every brick of the week and every podcast because I watch it. And now that I'm coaching and advising entrepreneurs and I'm listening to them not make decisions. And guess what? They're in the same spot three weeks from now. They'll be in the same spot six months from now. So if you don't make decisions, you will not make progress. And the more decisions you make, the better you're going to get at execution. It's called practice. You on board with that? You got your pen out. You're writing these things down. This is gold. I'm changing your life and I'm changing your business. Okay. Second component of this is discipline and accountability. Okay. So whether you're in sports, you're in business, you're in mar- you're married, you're a parent, you have to have discipline and you have to have accountability. And those disciplines are not trying to have the next big greatest idea. It's making small decisions every day that are going to make a huge impact over time. You have to have the discipline to make decisions. And the second component of that is guess what? Accountability. We all need it, right? How much time are you spending on social media? How much time are you spending not doing things to move your business forward? You go down that rabbit hole, you hop on LinkedIn, you start joining groups, you start writing a newsletter. All those things, sure, they'll make an impact, but they're not going to fix your business today. And so you need accountability. And that's why I started the House of Bricks Business Advisory Services is to give entrepreneurs and businesses my blueprints that have worked for over 25 years. And when I say they've worked, the blueprints were created through tons of failure, but that's what gave me the data to make the right decision. So you need discipline and you need accountability. Third component, I live my life on the edge. I go for it every day. I'm going all in. And I have and live a high stakes strategy life. And if you're starting a business, welcome to the club. You're in it. Okay. And now you're playing the high stakes game. Maybe you took out money on a credit card. Maybe you quit your job. Maybe you took your kid's college 
fund, which I would advise you to do anyway, get that money out of a college fund and start your kids a business, put money in the market, don't send them to college and waste $200,000 teaching them things that 90% of them don't apply in the real world. Hopefully I didn't upset some college graduates off. I have a couple that work for me, but that's just my philosophy. Going $200,000 in debt at 22 years old, probably not the best decision financially, but hey, some people like it. And not to say you can't be successful going to college. I just went down a rabbit hole, kind of mixing some things in here. But the point is the high stake strategy, you're playing the game of life and you only get one turn at it, right? You can't turn back time. It's never tomorrow. It's never yesterday. It's always today. And today you are in the game. It's a high stakes game. I want to encourage you. And that's why I'm doing this is you're struggling, you're frustrated and getting around like-minded people that are going through the same struggles that you are is going to help you. Number one, gain the confidence to stay the course, okay? The only time something fails is when you quit. Wherever you're at in your business, just take that off the table. You're not quitting. You're gonna keep pushing forward. You're gonna keep building. You started the business for a reason. Keep building it, keep trying, and get around like-minded people. Again, that's why I'm doing these Brick of the Weeks. We also just started uh, a LinkedIn group called the House of Bricks. I'm gonna build a community of entrepreneurs, and we're gonna battle and win together. Last component is really building a business beast. And I know that may sound a little cheesy, but building a business beast is really having that mindset that you can win no matter what the obstacles are, right? And and it's approaching it like your life is on the line, right? You've got to attack this with everything you have. You started the business. And again, there are people out there trying to take market share from you, take market share from your customers. And so you have to approach it with that beast mindset. And I don't know the statistics off the top of my head, but most businesses fail. They really do. And the reason they fail is number one, the, the entrepreneur doesn't have, he may have a good idea at the wrong time. Uh, he may have a bad idea at a good time, but you you have to just get your product to market, get the feedback and continue to grow your business. So I want to thank you for joining me today on another episode of the Brick of the Week. So as we wrap up here, again, if you enjoyed this episode, I need your help too, right? If you enjoyed it, share it with your network, invite your friends, uh, you know, we're not getting a massive attendance yet. Actually, I'm just going to start that over. I want to say that. So, all right, final take. I want to thank everybody for joining me on this week's episode of the House of Bricks. And if you like this episode, please comment below, share it with your network. I'm here to help you, but uh, you can also help me out by sharing this with your network, share it with people you know. The more entrepreneurs that we get, in a community, the stronger we're all going to be, right? Go fast, go alone, go far, go together. I want to go on this journey with you. I want to help you optimize your time in the struggle zone because that's where you're going to grow the most. And I want to give you my battle-tested blueprints that have lasted and worked over the last 25 years. As I said earlier, they only worked because I failed over and over again, and that helped me get to the right decisions and there are patterns in business. And now I have a system and a way of coaching and advising other entrepreneurs to make the most of their business and think exit ready and position yourself to exit for a high multiple. Thanks again. I'll see you next week.